Hey guys, welcome back to Scale Auto Guys Workbench. Now I don't know if you guys remember this kit. If you've been following me for a while, you'll remember that I got this kit at a flea market uh, last summer. And I've been waiting on some parts. I've been looking for some parts and finally got them to complete this this kit. And uh, I did an unboxing on that kit at that time. And I'm going to run you through it again because I finally got the parts and I'm ready to put it together. So if you remember correctly, there's the body. Now this is a two-in-one kit. And... You know, I'm finally, I'm excited to get get uh, to building on this. Now, the previous owners of this kit turned it from a sedan, well, partially anyway, on this side, into a hardtop. And I guess I'm going to have to trim out this piece here to make this a full-on hardtop. I've been debating on whether or not I want to build it with the, the blower and the carb sticking through the hood or if I just want to build it as a stock version um, I'm thinking a little bit of both a little bit of both so on this tree you got the hood with the opening in it for the blower and your stock manifold and your blower manifolds on that tree On this tree, whoops, something just fell off. That's a distributor. By the way, this is a 1996 edition of this kit. So it's probably been repopped at least once since then, I'm going to guess. But, uh, yeah, anyway, here's the uh, engine, exhaust system, etc., etc. Your chassis tub. There's uh, the doors in there. It's got some really good detail to them. And it does have a little bit of a carpeting kind of flooring in there. It's your dash. Yeah, a lot of the parts were loose in the, in the box. And what I was missing was the upper radiator hose, a cylinder head, and I think that was it. So here's your chassis, seat backs. I like that this has separate door handles and armrests so that you can detail those and then attach them to the door panels. And it's kind of neat. You don't see that very often in kits, they're usually molded into the tub. This one, this is right right here. This is where the upper radiator hose was. It's gone. Here's the chrome tree. That's fully intact. I am missing the uh, red plastic inserts for the taillights. That's only a minor detail um, because I have, to me, a clear red that I can use for taillight lenses. I just have to paint them in. It's not a huge deal. It's not a game changer or, or a breaker. Everything else is intact on the chrome tree. Here's the glass, still in its original bag. So that's good to go. And the decal sheet. Now, because this is the age of, that it is, I'm seriously doubting that I'm going to be able to use these decals um, and get them on the vehicle before they you know, break apart. It's all one piece. Now, they haven't been folded or bent or anything like that, so it's a possibility. But generally, decals this old uh, don't hold up. So... I'm going to give it a try, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. Here's the instruction sheet. Gives you a little history on the GTO. 
And if you guys know what GTO stands for, where it, where it's got its name, why don't you go ahead and leave that down in the comments section. I'd like to know if you guys know what it is. I know what it is, but I'm not going to reveal it right now. Just go ahead and leave me a comment uh, with the name, the explanation of the GTO emblem or nameplate. It'll be fun. It'll be a dis discussion starter. Now, these are the only tires that came in the kit. They're uh, Goodyear steel belted radials. Um, yeah. I would like to, on the box art there, it has a wider tire on the back. And if you look at the chrome tree, with those wheels that they have on the box art, you can see that the rear wheel is a little deeper than the rest of them. Otherwise, I'm stuck using the stock wheels, which are good looking wheels, but I would prefer using these aftermarket ones. I do have a bunch of extra tires around here from other kits. I do have these Goodyear Slicks. These come from the 69 Torino kit. I do have some... Oh, I don't know where they went to. But I do have some Race Master Slicks around here. I don't know because these are pretty good sized wheel backs. I don't know that those will fit inside the uh, Race Master Slicks. They're not going fit, to fit into those Goodyears either. Well, back to the beginning of this intro, I mentioned that I was missing some engine parts. And thanks to a seller on eBay, I have all of the parts I need, and then some, to build the engine for this car. All I really needed was the upper radiator hose and one cylinder head. But I've got the entire engine now, so... I don't know what I can do with this as of yet. I'm going to have to look into maybe doing a, putting an engine in a kit that has, you know, like a like a Craftsman Plus series kit or something along that lines. So, have to wait and see. All right. Well, I have just a little bit of cleanup to do on this body. I'm going to have to trim out that that piece there because it's missing on this side and it is not in the box so I cannot reattach it. So fate has made this into a hard top for me. It's not a big deal. <laughs> not a big deal at all. Um, and then I have to decide what color I want to paint it. But first off we're going to get over to the paint booth after I do a little sanding and uh, get some primer laid down on this. I kind of like that blue on the box art. I'm going to have to see what I have in my paint stash that can come close to that color. So, who knows? Alright, let's get started on this and I'll see you in a minute.
fellas. While you weren't looking, I went ahead and got the, the grill painted up with the turn signals. I did my infamous jewel for the headlights thing. I love doing those. It gives it a sense of reality. Um, I am in the middle of getting the engine done. I'm waiting for some paint to dry. And I gotta, you know, do a little bit of detail painting on that, the starter and what have you. I've got the suspension is all painted up and ready to go. That's uh, front and rear. And that's what I'm going to be working on next is the suspension. The interior bucket, um, it's coming along, but I'm still going to have to add another coat of paint. And I still have to do the tires and wheels. So let's get started on this. I'm skipping around on the direction sheet because things like I'm waiting for the paint to cure and the clear coat to cure and things like that. So any body related building I can't do because of that. So I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to get the suspension done right now. Uh, get the engine finished up, get the wheels and tires done, and then we can kind of sort of get into um, foiling the body and uh, getting the interior done. So let's go ahead and get this step done here, the suspension. This is going to be a quick, easy uh, thing to do. Because this, well, I have to put the springs on it and the shocks, but this is just going to fit right in here. No problems. So, let's get going.
Now with this build, you also have upper control arms that go in place. Those go right, unfortunately, right where I have the clamps. So I'm going to let this set up for a minute or two. And I'll be right back with you and we'll be putting those upper control arms on. Okay, fellas, I skipped a little ahead. Um, I wanted to get some of this done. Oop, there we go. I still have to do the shock absorbers, but I do have this rear suspension done. What you have to do is you have a coil spring on each side here. Oops. And uh, I got those in place. I don't have the... Oh, my gosh. Okay. This is what I get for skipping ahead. There we go. And I'll glue those from the other side. Have to get those clamped down here real quick. I forgot to do the trailing arms there. Or I guess you'd call them maybe. I don't know what the heck you call them. Now off the top of my head. <laughs> get everything clamped in place and then I'll come back and glue those. So there's two pins up here. You have the two springs back here that you have to glue to the axle and to the chassis. And then there's two pins back here on the exhaust pipes. Rolling it over, you can see that I have the upper control arms in place. And the lower control arms and the cross member put in place. And now we're just waiting for glue to set. Now obviously I'm going to have to come back and do a little touch up painting. Because you can see right in here the, the top of the springs. And uh, where I just kind of oops and scooped a little of that glue out of there. It ate some of the paint. So I'm going to have to touch up some paint. And that's not a big deal. You often have to do that anyway. So this part is done. We'll have to get the engine finished up and get that installed next. And then on to the tires and wheels. Okay, fellas. I got the engine completed and installed. I did that while you weren't looking. <laughs> I do that a lot. Anyway, uh, I got the engine completed and installed. These are not the wheels that I wanted to go with this vehicle. I wanted to go with these. But unfortunately, these are a little too thick. These are for the wider tires that I talked about at the beginning of the video here. The tires that I don't have in the kit. And I thought about taking my Dremel and grinding this down. But I compared this to the other rims. And they were still, even after I ground off all of this, they would still be too deep to fit these tires. So instead of destroying these wheels, I'll just save those for another project later down the road I've always got something going on so I'll find a use for them so here's the chassis with the wheels tires and suspension all done and the engine completed and installed as well as the drive shaft so and all four wheels roll yay <laughs> they have just enough resistance on them that they're not just gonna roll off the shelf or anything like that but they do still roll now I did try my hand at doing the white lettering on the tires and the letters aren't raised up enough to really make it stand out they just look like white globs of paint on the letter, you know, where the letters go. So, 
I decided to scrap that idea and just go with the you can still see the lettering but it's not white so there you go now let's get started on this interior that's going to be a job and a half because I am not set on the color yet I've already applied color but I'm not sure that I like it I may end up stripping that and starting over so let's get on to that next all right fellas I got all the foil work done I know I didn't shoot a part of it where I said I was going to be doing it but here it is what do you think I think this color combination with this chrome looks really super fantastic so I've got uh, just the interior to finish up and just a little bit of tiny bit of uh, different parts and well we'll be coming into the final here pretty soon so let's get started on that interior All right, fellas, now it's time to put in the glass. I kind of like the one-piece glass, except for when shards of metal foil stick to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I like the one-piece glass because you can handle it um, by the little beams in the middle here so that you don't get fingerprints on it. And it makes it easy to make sure that you don't have any fingerprints on it. You can just take an eyeglass cleaning cloth here and just gently wipe any dust and debris off the glass. So this has three locating pins there here here and back here and the pins itself is on the roof um, let's see if I can hold this up here one here and one here and one here so it makes it easy to align the glass I say glass I mean clear plastic 
so you can just drop it down in place now I had to open up those holes a little bit because they were closed off by some flash now with the pins there you can get that glass right in the right spot and glue it in of course I use this Mod Podge it's more of a clear I mean more of a liquid I should say more of a liquid than the stuff in the jar and uh, it makes it easy to apply but sometimes it's a real pain in the butt because the tip constantly clogs on these on this thing so I'm just going to put a couple of lines of this glue in there if I can see what I'm doing got to look up over the camera here and then in the front it doesn't take a whole bunch of this stuff to glue in your, your windows Now, I'm going to have to weight this down because of the way it is, it kind of bunches up in the center and it lifts off the pins. So, I'm going to take my bottle of paint here, put that right in the center. Now, we've got to wait for that glue to dry. So, I'll be back in a little bit. All right, fellas, it's been a couple minutes since I uh, put this bottle of paint on here. Let's see if the glue is set enough so that that glass doesn't pop up. And it appears as though it has. I've got to do the rear view mirror. This I can use the Mod Podge for as well because it will not fog the glass like your uh, tube glue. That, that's what I use, tube glue, as you know. Um, the Mod Podge does not fog like, like the tube glue would. So I'm going to set this up in my tweezers. Oh, wait a second that looks like it needs a little bit of trimming it's got just an ever so slight little bit of flash on it so I'm just gonna take the blade and scrape it along the edges here take off that mold line there we go that should be good and I got a big fingerprint right in the middle of the mirror <laughs> which is fine Wow, I just cleared this nozzle, and this is exactly what I mean. It clogs in a, in a second. That's the only drawback to using this type of uh, Mod Podge. When this is gone, I'm thinking about using the stuff in the bigger tub. What the heck? And uh, that can just be brushed on. All right. Give me a second here to clear this nozzle. Wow, this was really clogged this time. There we go. This bottle's almost gone, so I have to wait a little bit for it to run down to the top there. There we go just takes a little drop that's all you need right there and just put it right there in the hole that's
sometimes using tweezers for parts placement is not the ideal thing Now, how many of you guys put the mirrors in just perfectly straight, parallel to the top of the windshield? I rarely do. I, used, I, I like to put it in there in just a little bit of a twist. Oops. And I'm twisting the wrong direction. It's upside down. i got to twist the other way. That way there it gives a more realistic pose for the driver yeah that should be right about ugh. come on now anyway I, I like to angle it a little bit to where it would look like somebody was in the car driving and then they adjusted the mirror so they can see out the back window all right let's set that uh, set that aside for right now the I skipped all around the, uh, the construction of this car um, the next steps is talking about doing the suspension the engine and uh, the tires and wheels I've basically got all that done I'm still working on the interior I had to wait for some paint to dry I'm gonna go in and do some detailing on the interior tub and the dash and we're just about finished up with this um, let's see here yeah just about the back side of the instruction sheet is very sparse and just in their direction so that means it's almost done let me uh, pan up a little bit this is how I hang my direction sheet while I'm working on a kit that way there it's right there I don't have to mess around with it it's uh, just look up and say oh okay that's the next step so it makes it easy all I did was uh, I had a couple of thermometers pan up just a little bit more I have a couple of thermometers here and they're underneath the display cases and that's what holds them in place and then I just put a couple of little clips on on the stem for the, the uh, thermometer and I just hang the directions off of that makes it convenient that way there the papers not laying all over the workbench here and getting in the way so all right let's set this aside give it a a little bit to dry and then we can get started back on the interior tub
All right, fellas, got the interior all finished. I used a little bit of uh, bare metal foil to accent the dashboard and the center console. I find that uh, that works out really well. So bare metal foil is for more than just doing the exterior parts. It's also for doing interior trim and it usually works out pretty well. So we're all set with that. Just got to let everything sit and dry. The next step I believe is, whoop, let me take my direction sheet down. Oop, sorry, didn't mean to bump the camera. Yeah, it's on to the put everything together stage. So with that in mind, I'll see you at the final. Hey guys, welcome back to the final on this 1998 edition of the 1964 Pontiac GTO 2-in-1 kit from Ravel Monogram. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this was a kit that was purchased at a flea market in the summer of 2023. The actual purchase happened in the summer of 2022. Uh, this was an easy mistake to make due to the health issues that I've went through over the last year. So this has been sitting on my shelf waiting to be built for a little over a year. Um, overall, this was a pretty fun kit to build and it turned out pretty great. I'm glad that I was able to track down the parts that I needed to complete this kit. You know, sometimes eBay can be a great resource for parts that you need to complete a build. I also mentioned uh, earlier in the video that I wish I could have used the centerline wheels that came with the kit, but unfortunately it just had the skinny tires that worked with the stock wheels and I was not able to find or track down a set of wider tires for those centerline rims. I think they would have looked a lot better on this car than the stock wheels but the stock wheels look okay they're not bad they're not great but they're not bad as far as the paint goes well it went down flawlessly as well as the clear coat which is kind of surprising because i usually lay down pretty nice paint jobs but when i go to do the clear coat well the clear coat sometimes will end up eating the paint so that's unfortunate the chrome bare metal foil that I used, I think really goes well with this color. I was a bit skeptical about the decals though. Now, speaking of decals, I was a little skeptical of those and whether or not a set of 26 year old decals were gonna come off the sheet in one piece. But as you can see, they did and they went down flawlessly. Now, the GTO kit that I just recently finished, the 68 GTO, well, I had some leftover decals. And so I borrowed some decals from that kit. The front and rear license plate uh, being two of them. And then a couple of the uh, Pontiac logos. For the headlights, well, I didn't use the clear lenses that came with the kit. But I did use uh, some 5mm gemstones, and they fit right into the headlight sockets. And I just dabbed a little, um, little bead of Mod Podge into the center of the headlight buckets and dropped the gemstones in. They fit perfectly. And they give, give the car a little bit of a sense of realism. It looks like an actual headlight in there instead of some fogged up piece of plastic. The taillights, well, those were unobtainium on eBay. I could not find a set at all. So I just got me a fine line tooth, um, toothbrush, fine line paintbrush. Oh my gosh, fine line paintbrush and some Tamiya X27 clear red. And I just laid a little line of that clear red in place of the taillight lenses. And it worked out really well. You can't tell the difference. It actually looks pretty good in there. The interior, 
Well, as you saw, I went with blue on blue. Uh, it's a little bit darker blue than the, than the car body itself. So that kind of looks all right. Um, I did a little bit of uh, bare metal foil on the dash and the center console to kind of accent it. Um, I think that looks better than, say, silver paint. The chrome, you know, the, the bare metal foil chrome looks, it stands out a little bit better, in my opinion. So, you know, who says that bare metal foil is just for exterior trim work when you can use it on your interior as well? All in all, I think that this turned out pretty great considering its age and where I bought it. It was an open box kit and I uh, wasn't sure if all the parts were in it or not when I bought it. I got it for a decent price, so I wasn't too concerned. I figured I could uh, come up with all of the necessary parts to put it together. And as you can see, I did. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, please write those in the comment section below and I'll be happy to respond as soon as possible. Be sure to follow me on Facebook. And if you'd like to drop me an email, you can do so at scaleautoguy at gmail.com. If you want more videos like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for watching Scale Auto Guys Workbench, and I'll see you on the next build.